The thumbnail says, stop, time sensitive. And the orchids in question are catacetinate. But wait, what I'm going to talk about now kind of applies to when they go dormant, doesn't it? But here we are, and they're coming out of dormancy. Ha <laughs> watering timing for catacetinae. We hear that a lot because we don't want to rot the roots which have to grow a considerable length before they are ready to absorb water. But it's spring. Why am I putting this into question? Don't click off just yet because things are different with the care of catacetinae in a semi-hydroponic setup. And this video could make or break your growing season with these amazing orchids. Let me explain. Contrary to many opinions about catacetinae and their dormant resting period being a completely dry period because the roots die, I have never left my catacetinae dry throughout that period because of my setup. In semi-hydroponics, things work a little differently. The lecca should not be left to dry out completely for several reasons. One of them being, they will lose their wicking efficacy once they go completely dry. And while it is easy to re-establish that by soaking the pot several times to start the wicking characteristics up again, the second reason the semi-hydro setup should never be left to dry out completely is because the leca will act as a desiccating agent and viable roots will be sucked dry because the leca will draw the moisture out of them. So one can say, who cares? It's a catacetinae, it will grow new roots anyway, it doesn't matter. And while that is true and makes for easy repotting and transitioning of this genus, when a repot is not necessary, why disturb the orchid? Why let viable roots dry out? Why lose the concept of semi-hydroponics altogether in order then to start them from scratch when the orchid is actively growing and needs as much backup as possible? My thinking with a semi-hydroponic setup is it is ideal for orchids to not get disturbed because the media does not break down if you use inorganic media. So with that, I maintain the principle of the setup and make sure that every advantage of this setup works in the favor of the orchid. So, with all that being said, we keep the leca damp, not sopping wet. It is enough to feel a little dampness in the microfiber while the reservoir is dry. If there is a residual dampness in the microfiber, that means that the pot is damp as well. This is how I tied my catacetinae over during their dormant period. But now we come to the meat and bones of what we have to do to ensure our new roots add to the already existing roots, which remember in this setup they stay viable while still ensuring that our new root system will not rot out. Because they will if our media is wet the moment they touch it and have not grown to any length. If you are already seeing and thinking and knowing what I'm going to recommend next, don't hesitate to hit that like button because your catacetinae are going to grow into beast mode in the setup. And if you take on board the watering or lack thereof when your catacetinae are at this stage. Also, share this video. Many people chop their roots off altogether at the end of the season and store their bulbs until they see new growth. Well, keeping an old root system intact not letting any bulbs shrivel out are major factors in supporting the new growth of your catacetinae as they come out of dormancy without having to draw from any reserves. This will result in bigger, better and healthier growths as well as a bloom show that will be well worth all the fandangle we are dealing with at this stage of their growth phase. By sharing the video, you may also be helping someone out who's about to make a mistake after their first season of growing catacetinae and semi-hydro, meaning it's the first time their catacetinae are coming out of dormancy in this setup and the roots are just starting like one of mine is. I appreciate the support and I am 100% certain that any catacetinae that get the same treatment will as well and so will the grower. My two examples are Jack of Diamonds and my After Dark Black Pearl. So here are two things you need to keep in mind when you see these two examples. After you've done the dormancy damp pot care for several months, a new growth will appear like this one. No new roots yet. The moment you see the eye swell, it doesn't even have to be this advanced, but the moment you see an eye swell, that is when you flush the pot thoroughly really wet the pot and then you can put it back on the shelf with the reservoir empty and you keep doing that every time you feel your microfiber is going to just go barely damp 
That is what I'm doing with my Jack of Diamonds. And the residual water you see in the reservoir is what has just dripped through after the flush. I can now empty that and then put the orchid back on its shelf and wait. In case I have to repeat it, I shall do so. But my point of reference is to see new nubbins coming because after I see root nubbins start to appear, that is when I let the surface of the pot go really dry. Remember, there's always a bit of damp lower in the pot. So here is my after dark. We have some fabulous roots showing. Such a beautiful sight. I love it. And you can see how dry I have left my pot. Even the roots from the last season, they show no sign of damp at all. Now, my microfiber is also very dry and that is not what I want, but I know that the pot still has a residual dampness because of when it was the last time that I flushed it. But for the sake of the video, I needed you to see how dry the microfiber is because what we do at the stage of seeing root nubbins is not flush from the top abundantly. Instead, we fill the reservoir to half. If you have your orchid in a setup that does not include the mask, but has a reservoir with two drainage holes around the lower perimeter, what you want to do at this stage of your new root growth is just dunk the pot to the level of the drainage holes and allow the reservoir to fill to half. That's it. Don't empty it. Don't drain it. Then, as your new roots find their way into the media, you can judge the reservoir level and decrease the amount of water you leave in there bit by bit. The point being that, by the time the roots are long enough and have grown well into the pot, that the media, while still a tad damp, won't be wet. But we have to maintain the old root system as well as bring the new root system into an environment where they won't collapse. It does sound like a little bit of a guessing game, but the same would apply with no roots and a recently repotted catacetinae. So, to recap, before the real watering begins, the first swelling of an eye of a new growth flush as usual. Leave the reservoir dry and do that every time once the microfiber has a damp feel about it again. Not wet, damp to the touch. Then at the first sign of root nubbins, only add a little water into the reservoir and the longer the new roots grow, the less water in the reservoir should remain so that the moisture does not wick up into the pot too high. What I am putting in my reservoir today for my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl is just RO water with 100 parts per million of seaweed. No fertilizer. Do not add fertilizer to your water at this stage because you do not want to have any salt buildup wicking to the surface of your pot where new roots will come in contact with it and immediately burn. The fertilizer stage comes much later in the growth phase of the catacetinae. The old bulbs will take care of all of that for you and they won't shrivel because your old root system is still functioning to support them and they in turn support the new growths. Moving forward, every time my reservoir grows dry, I will add RO water with 100 parts per million of seaweed and eventually, I'm guessing probably in five weeks, my reservoirs will be left to dry just long enough until it is time to flush the pot through again and then off we grow. I know that it is difficult to imagine roots growing into a pot where you cannot see them, as is the case with my pots. But I have done this so many years now, I have a feel for what is going on in the pot. If you have any doubts or uncertain about the stage of a catacetinae, and should you start watering heavily to support the growths or not, then usually it is said that if your growth is leafing out, that is also a signal to start watering. Another signal is if any of your back bulbs are shriveling and your new growth is leafing out, then go ahead and water. However, it may also mean that your new growth is leafing out too soon for other reasons. So if you cannot see your roots, follow the instructions as recommended in this video, but wait until your new growth is already taller than the previous bulb as well as leafed out. That is when you can water abundantly and start fertilizing. Still, I don't want to distract away from what is important at this stage of your catacetinae and semi-hydro. Stop the watering, stop the flushing. It is now baby steps with filling the reservoir only and allowing the new roots to join the existing roots in the pot. 
If that all sounded super confusing, less is more at this stage, and then we can talk about what comes next further down the line. Meanwhile, I do hope that this video was helpful, and I hope it wasn't confusing, but if you have any specifics you would like to bring to my attention, please let me know in the comments, and we can go into more detail there. Every grow environment is different, and every cat of Setanae has a different stage of growth depending on the environment. Mine may be in a premature stage. Yours may have already advanced a little more. So specifics in the comments. We'll take it from there. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Because this is the first year that I have had two growths on any cat of Setanae on a single bulb. And wow, I am excited to share the progress with you. P.S. Little side note. Two new growths on a catacetum that had 60% taken out of it while growing in semi-hydro, keeping an old root system intact, not letting any back bulbs shrivel, methinks that speaks for itself. So, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and support. I hope your catacetinae growing season will be the best you have had to date. And with that in mind, have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.